Caddis Maximus here, this time with another uh, interesting item. This time is the Stanley Handsaw Tooth Set. So what this is, is a tool that helps bend saw teeth back out. I have a pruning blade here for example, but as saws wear out, uh, people used to hand sharpen them, use files and actually individually sharpen the teeth. And many times uh, the teeth would kind of get pushed inward a little bit. And so this is a tool that actually helps bend the individual teeth out. It's not something that's really used anymore. It's mainly used with hand saws and unfortunately not a whole lot of hand saws are used. This Stanley hasn't been made for a while. I should mention that the older ones with the slot head screw were Japanese made and I believe the newer ones before they went out of production that had a Phillips head hinge screw uh, were actually Taiwanese. Another uh, nice thing about this is, say with pruning blades, there's many situations where the kerf, they offset, excuse me, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. The reason teeth are even offset is so that the blade doesn't have a bunch of friction on the body of the blade. If the teeth were just all flat, then as you saw it in, you just get a whole bunch of friction on the side of the blade, making it much more difficult. So saws have a set, which is the teeth are bent, some are bent this way, and some are bent this way, so that it cuts a slot that's wider than the body of the blade, so that it doesn't bind up. In pruning situations, you really want a lot of extra clearance, and many times these pruning blades I personally had, where they still will bind up. So something nice about this is you can use this with modern Sawzall pruning blades, and actually bend the teeth over to make it cut just a, a bit of an extra wide slot to really reduce binding. A while ago, I had actually posted about this saw set, which is a larger one used for, say, bow saws or two-person saws. And uh, I didn't really know what it was, and so I posted a picture of it on my stories, and people had uh, responded, this is a saw tooth set. So that's what uh, allowed me to recognize this when I found it used. This is a much better design. It's a more modern design. It is cast aluminum versus cast steel, like this old heavy-duty one. But this is just a little bit easier to use for two reasons. One, as you can see, it has a magnifying lens. And two, this little wheel is numbered, so it's just a little bit easier to use. This wheel here, as you can see, starts out at almost no taper. And as it comes around, let me loosen this up. As you come around, you can see that it's just a wider and wider taper cut into a spiral. And so you can vary how far you're setting the teeth. The other thing about being double action is one like this, you just put in the blade. I mean, this blade won't fit because it's too narrow. It will pop above that. But you would put in the blade, and the back of the blade hits there. The middle of the blade's against the uh, anvil there, and then when you press it, this plunger is what bends the tooth over, but it's made for much larger teeth. What's interesting about this one is instead of just holding it in the three-point system, it actually has a one this main plunger, outer plunger, which comes and grit, grips the bottom of the blade. And then if we look in here, we can see that this second plunger, this that little thing nub coming out of the center of the silver piece, is the actual nub that's bending the tooth. So it clamps the blade and then bends the tooth. So this is probably one of the better ones. Let's get a little bit of zoom in here. <clears throat> get a lot of zoom. So anyway, this one's actually, I think, is pretty easy to use. And we'll just do that right here. We'll see how well I can get a camera angle. Some of these teeth that are shallower are a bit harder to bend than some of these other teeth. And then this is a back cutting blade, which means it cuts both directions. So say this tooth right here, we want to push it out a little bit. We just line it up, try to get it in there, just really well centered kind of hard for me to get uh, it's even hard for me to see in real life you get that centered up like so and then squeeze and now you can see how we've pushed that tooth over now the one next to it if I wanted to bend that one I need to flip the blade over try to figure out where the heck I'm at which is not easy to do inside here I see why they have the magnifying lens surprisingly hard to see. I can't even really use a flashlight very effectively because it causes the dynamic range to blow out. But if you have this right under a real bright light, then you can just see the saw teeth and you just get each tooth lined up and then you just give it a nice squeeze. 
And as you can see, we just bent the second tooth over. So we have this one bent over this way and that one bent over this way. And so that's exactly how this tool is used. It's a bit tedious because obviously you would have to go down essentially the whole blade, take each tooth, line it up, get it into the tool, make sure that you have just the right angle or make sure you have the tooth directly centered in the anvil and then you have to give it a squeeze. It does give your hand a workout, but it's surprisingly how well it works. Even on these shorter teeth here, you can see we got quite a bit of bend out of that. And since it's pressing just right on the side there, you don't have to worry about it doling the teeth and think it's still a pretty neat and useful tool. So I had an idea, this is actually a Distin, which actually does make pretty nice hand saws, but I don't own any. Uh, with hacksaw blades, they're actually more kind of corrugated because the teeth are so fine that they don't offset the individual teeth. Instead, as you can see, they kind of give it a wave pattern. But I was kind of curious if you could, there'd be certain situations where you may want a bit more kerf on a hacksaw blade. And I'm wondering if this can work on one of these, and I suspect it will. Oh yeah, no problem. So you could actually go along on a hacksaw blade, do this, it's going to kind of bend it up, but then you flip it around and just go in between the individual areas. It may be easier for you to find the little waves and try to align those, but then you just go along the other way. And like so, you can actually give it just a bit more wave so it cuts a bit more curve so your hacksaw blades uh, won't jam up as much. And I actually think it's pretty neat that you can use it with hacksaw blades. So anyway, that's my review of the Stanley, excuse me, 15640, which, uh, which I will call a uh, more of a professional level uh, manual saw tooth set. Definitely pretty cool. I do like how it works with that uh, plunger that actually grabs a hold of the blade. That just makes it a bit simpler to use than one like this, because one like this, you do need to make sure that you are keeping good tension on the blade. I just wish the Stanley would have put some kind of uh, maybe pieces of steel. As you can see, because of the cast aluminum, it is getting some wear. Although, to tell you the truth, even steel ones will also get quite a bit of wear. Anyway, kind of a tool from a bygone era. But surprisingly enough, does still have some use. And it hasn't been uh, that long ago that they discontinued these. Because Granger, uh, which is a big warehouse supplier, Still has a listing for these. They say they've been discontinued, but apparently Stanley was making these at least into the 2000s. Uh, but apparently demand just went down too much. But pretty cool, neat little tool. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.